Welcome everyone to week four. This week we're going to explore social media strategies and tactics. Specifically, we're going to look into social media marketing and like content marketing, it's deploying social media posts and ads with a marketing objective. Then we'll look at how to plan your strategy and the various considerations you need to make. We'll take a look at what's involved in advertising on social media, including some of the different ad formats available and strategies available like boosting your posts. Then we'll look at social media analytics and some of the key metrics you should be looking for. And we're also going to take a look at the steps to get Instagram shopping set up. Then I'll wrap up and hand things off to our two guest panelists today. So obviously social media is an important component of your digital marketing mix. With about 4 billion people using social media on a regular basis, it's certainly one of the primary channels that artists can use to reach their audiences and their prospects. Uh, a few quick facts. Facebook is still the, so uh, the top social media channel with the most active daily users. An active person on social media spends an average of about three hours a day. And more than 80% of all social media is consumed on a mobile device. And like content marketing, social media marketing is more than just making posts to your accounts. Social media marketing involves creating and sharing your content with specific goals and objectives in mind. Like content marketing, however, your social media channels can be defined in three key areas. First is owned. Those are the elements that you can control. These include things like your accounts, your posts, and related content. Then we have shared, which are components like mentions, shares, likes. Those are provided by others and are components that you don't directly control. Finally, you have paid channels, which allow you to increase the visibility of a post or advertise directly within various social media channels. I like to look at strategies as a cycle, something that is constantly evolving and moving forward. So if we were to start at the arrow here, we'd, be, uh, we'd begin by establishing some goals. Like we've already covered, these goals should be tangible objectives, things like increasing visits to your site, getting more likes, more shares, increasing brand awareness, um, launching a product and so on. As part of your goals, you want to define your metrics for success, also called KPIs or key performance indicators. In other words, are you actually getting more shares, likes and visits, etc. It provides us with metrics to determine if our campaigns and activities are actually working. Then we make sure we have our brand voice defined. This includes your brand story, the languages you're going to use, the style and visual identity, keywords that you're going to use in the posts and ads themselves. Then we define our buyer personas, which we've defined in a previous session. Who are we talking to? What types of questions do they have? What are their motivations? How do we communicate with them? Things like that. Then we determine our content formats. Are we going to use photos, uh, video, infogra uh, infographics? How are we going to optimize the content and make it easy to share, like, click, visit, etc.? These content channels should also have a defined call to action. In other words, what is it that you want your prospect to do when they see the ad or the post? Then you determine your schedule. How often are you going to post? When are you going to post? Then supplement your posts with things like paid options, customer incentives. That includes things like boosting and placed paid ads. 
Then you monitor how your campaign is working. What types of conversations are your, are your followers having? What types of questions are they asking? Are you getting shares, likes, follows, and mentions? Analytics will also provide information on things like who's visiting, from where, how did they get there, and others. Based on the effectiveness of your campaign, you then make your adjustments and adapt based on those results and then run your next campaign. So here are a few best practices or some tips when it comes to making your posts. So you don't want to be filling up your posts with hashtags. The general rule these days is to never use more than three. It can also help if you set up a simple schedule or a reminder to check your channels. This helps serve a, a few purposes. It keeps you from wasting unscheduled time on social media and it provides you regular opportunities to respond to questions or requests. People are generally pretty impatient, so responding as quickly as you can will help with engagement and conversions. These scheduled check-ins that I refer to can help prevent requests from slipping through the cracks. Don't sweat it if you occasionally draw a blank when it comes to uh, an idea for something to post. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Another strategy is to bank your content and your post materials. By banking them, you can give yourself some breathing room to schedule them out in advance. So boosting or promoting a post is a form of paid advertising, but instead of placing an ad, you're paying for increased visibility and exposure for your post that goes beyond your friends and your followers. A boosted post can reach a much larger audience and can target potential customers based on things like location, age, interests, motivations, etc. Boosting can be a very affordable method for getting in front of new audiences and experimenting with paid social marketing. There's a high level process for boosting a post using both Facebook and Instagram. In both cases, you'll need to have a business account or business page. Although there was a time where you could boost a personal post on Facebook, that's no longer an option. So I'm going to go through the Facebook process here. In Facebook, you go to your business page and you click on the promote button. Then you select the type of promotion you want to run. In this case, it's to boost a post. Then Facebook asks, to select the post that you'd like to boost. You set a goal from the list of goals provided. These include things like get more messages, get more engagement, get more website visitors, get more leads. Then you add a button to the boosted post, which triggers the action you want to happen when someone clicks on it. For instance, go to your website or a specific page listed in the post. Examples of buttons that you'll often see include learn more, shop now, um, sign up. Then you select your audience based on the demographic options and other interests and, and motivators that they provide. You set the duration of the boost and then you finally set your budget. Facebook gives you a range of exposure impact based on the size of your budget. And then when you're finished, you just select boost your post. So Instagram follows a similar process as you can see here. And in some cases, your post or promotion may need to be reviewed and verified so it meets, uh, so it meets Facebook and Instagram's advertising policies. So in, in many cases, it goes out right away, but it may require a review before going live. So if you can boost and promote a post, then, and you understand that process, then you can place and run an ad campaign. They follow very similar processes and steps. Regardless of the channel, when preparing any campaign, you need to consider these four main moving parts. You want to set your goals, determine what you want to achieve with the campaign. Maybe you're launching a new product and you want to direct people to the product page, for instance. You want to be specific about who you want to reach. This is another example of 
where your, your work in developing your buyer personas can play a big role here. Then you decide on how long you want to run the ad, and then you finally decide on how much you want to spend. No matter where you're running your ad campaign, these core considerations are really what you need to lock down. Here are some examples of some different ad approaches, some different styles and layouts. These are specific to Facebook, which offers the widest range of advertising formats. But if you become familiar with these, then formats with other platforms use similar, uh, similar terminology and similar approaches. So video ads are self-explanatory. They let you reach audiences using sound and motion and are very effective. Image ads include photos, graphics, and, image, uh, and other forms of images. If you're selling products, then collection ads allow you to display items from your product catalog. Carousel ads showcase up to 10 images or videos within a single ad, which slide horizontally. Instant experience ads are a full screen experience that opens after someone taps on your ad, and these are exclusive to mobile devices. Lead ads present a simple form to the user so they can more specifically let you know what they're looking for, effectively qualifying that lead for you. Offer ads can take the form of an image, a video, or a carousel. They help highlight an offer or a discount and will then send an automatic reminder to users who clicked on it. Post engagement is another term for boosted posts. Event response ads provide a simple way for users to join your events and can let you know if people are attending or interested in attending. And page like ads are ads featuring a button that allows a user to instantly like your business page. So there are a lot of options here. Here are a few examples of some social ads and posts from different artists and organizations. The first is an Instagram ad from Ragma Design House, a Newfoundland-based design firm known for its fabrics and handcrafted bags. Next, we have an ad from the Banff Center for the Arts. This is an example of a video ad posted on Facebook. They've decided to, uh, to use a Learn More button in that ad, which makes um, a link to a specified page when clicked on. Next is an Instagram post from Kim and Lyle Campbell, who carve Haida totem poles and masks. And then we have Onion, a clothing manufacturer with a focus on environmentally friendly manufacturing processes and natural textiles. This is one of their Facebook ads, and as you can see, they're using a Shop Now button, which jumps a user out to their product catalog. Here are a few more examples of some social ads and posts from different artists and organizations. The first one is a post from Monte Cristo Magazine. The headline is about a Comox First Nation artist who saw parallels around imperialism and occupation in the Star Wars films and how British Empire colonialism impacted the indigenous, uh, indigenous communities in Canada. The ad itself has a direct link to the article page on the Monte Cristo Magazine website. Next we have an example of a carousel ad placed by artists in a community group based in Lake Scugog, Ontario. The carousel features work from their artists and the post includes a link to their Facebook page. And finally we have a Facebook ad placed by Anchor. They're a pretty innovative sock manufacturer. In this ad they're using an infographic to illustrate the natural sources of the dyes they use in their socks. Clicking on the image takes you to their website which makes strong and consistent use of the visual themes found in their ads, including the, in, uh, the infographic that I've included here. So every major channel provides their users with insights into their social media activity and how things are working or, or conversely not working. To access analytics, um, analytics sorry, some channels require that you have a business account or a business page. For example, Facebook and Instagram require business tier accounts, but Twitter doesn't. Based on feedback from participants 
in this program to date, much of your activity is focused around Facebook and Instagram, which is why we're focusing on these in this session. Um, I also want to take note that in the case of Instagram, its insights are available through its mobile app only, meaning that you can't access it from your computer or your laptop. In the case of Facebook, you can access insights from your business page and get information on things like page views, likes, your reach achieved from various posts and stories, and if you've added any followers. If you're advertising on Facebook, you can access specific ad metrics as well. Instagram divides its insights into three main categories. Content, including posts, stories, and promotions. Activity, which includes interaction and discovery activities, such as visits, clicks, and things like where users found you. An audience, which provides information on growth and things like follower counts. I want to note that Facebook has launched a new layout as, as of the time of this series called FB5, which um, I understand will become the only layout option this fall, 2020, at which time the classic layout will be no longer available. So these steps that I'm including here involve the new layout. Here are the steps to access insights using Facebook. Go to their business page and on that page you'll see a block with a summary of key insights for the past month including people reached, post engagements, and page likes. You can access all available insights by clicking on the see all um, option in the upper right of the insights block. You'll end up on the overview tab which gives you a bird's eye view of your key metrics like page views, likes, etc. You can then drill down further if you want by clicking on any of the individual metrics to access more information. You can also define the start and end dates if you want to analyze uh, or drill deeper for any particular metric. So as I mentioned, Instagram insights are only available to business accounts and are only available on the mobile app. Here are the steps to accessing Instagram Insights. In the app, you go to your account page. Business accounts will see a little bar graph icon in the upper right that I've indicated here. This will bring you to the Instagram Analytics dashboard. To get analytics on an individual post, you select the post you want to investigate. You scroll down to the bottom, tap on View Insights in the bottom left, and then you'll be presented with your insights. I also want to advise everyone that Instagram Insights and Analytics only become available for posts that you make after you switched or upgraded to your business account. And another word of caution is that you'll lose those if you switch back from a business to a personal account. So keep, it, um, keep your, your business account active once you've made that switch. Analytics dashboards can be pretty daunting, so I want to take a moment and boil these complex, potentially complex analytics down to three key metrics to help you better gauge and understand your success. So the first is reach. This would include specific metrics like impressions or how many times your post or ad showed up in a user feed. And in social media marketing terms, reach is often synonymous with views or the number of users who actually saw your content in their feed. The second important metric is engagement. This would be represented by some form of social interaction with your content, such as a, a like, a share, or a mention. The final metric here is conversions, where a user has actually clicked on your link, they've subscribed to your newsletter or your blog, or the ultimate conversion, they made a purchase. With these three analytics categories, you can paint a pretty good picture of how well your social media strategy is working. For instance, you can determine engagement rates and conversion rates by comparing views with reactions or views with clicks. Another really great insight 
that Facebook provides is the Pages to Watch feature. This shows you how similar competing pages are doing in relation to yours. It's an extremely helpful tool that helps define performance benchmarks, so I encourage you to check it out. Since social media is a category that spans a lot of different channels, it can get complicated to post, schedule, monitor, and analyze everything on an individual or channel-by-channel -channel basis. That's where social media management plat uh, platforms come in. They consolidate the process by connecting all of your channels through a single dashboard. There are many platforms out there, including Buffer, Hootsuite, Sprout, Loomly, and, and there's a bunch of others. Most of them offer a similar user experience, which allows you to post to many or multiple channels simultaneously. They allow you to access all of your analytics in, in a single unified dashboard. And they also allow you to set up a posting schedule. Most of them offer a free 30-day trial to try out their features. Hootsuite appears to be the only provider of the ones that we've identified here that still offers a free tier. That includes one user, three social channels, and up to 30 scheduled posts. They used to provide some analytics as well in their free tier, but this no longer seems to be available. The screen example here is a screenshot from Hootsuite's analytics. So it's been requested that we take a look at Instagram shopping, which is yet another way to sell your products through Instagram's integrated shopping experience. You can share your featured products through your organic posts and your stories, or have people discover your products in search and explore activities. Here are the key steps in setting up with Instagram shopping. First off, again, your account needs to be a business account and it needs to be connected to a Facebook page. Part of the rules also require that you are selling physical goods. The next step is to connect to a catalog. Instagram provides multiple options for doing this. The first one is to use Facebook's catalog manager. You go to facebook.com forward slash products. You create your catalog. You add your items and upload your product details and information. Then you connect your catalog to your Facebook account. Since Shopify is a Facebook e-commerce partner, and if you're already selling on Shopify, you can connect your catalog. And here are the steps. So you log into Shopify, you click the plus to add a sales channel, you click on Facebook, you click on get started, and then you connect your account where you then allow Shopify to connect with your Facebook, uh, your Facebook page and you verify your account information and, and authorize that connection. So while we know that there are exceptions to almost any rule, including a lot of the uh, processes and procedures that we've talked about over this series, I just wanted to take a moment to review a few tips to keep your posts on point. Whenever possible, you want to try and stay on brand. A good filter is to consider your brand's story when choosing the language for your post. We want you to think before you post and definitely don't drink and post. We've all come across those posts and thought to ourselves, well, what the heck was that person thinking when they posted that? Don't use too many hashtags. One to three is the generally accepted standard. Excessive use of hashtags can lead to shadow banning, which is where unbeknownst to you, your posts are throttled and potentially completely hidden from other user feeds. Posting things like facts or stats can be risky, so you make sure to confirm any facts before making posts. As we covered in last week's session, visual content makes a big difference in getting noticed, so try to use compelling visuals in your posts. Always check your posts for spelling and grammar. You don't want to be posting something out to the public and come across as a disorganized thought. Respond to questions or requests for information as quickly as you can. 
We talked about setting a routine for checking your feeds so that you don't let questions go unanswered for too long of a period. And finally, think about your audience and your customer personas when creating your posts. As we've covered earlier, you can affordably boost your posts and have a persona in mind to, uh, to improve those results. So here's a quick recap of what we reviewed today. Like content marketing, the same concept applies to social marketing. It's social media with a specific marketing objective. We explored some of the considerations you'll want to make when planning out your social media marketing activities. We looked at some best practices for posting and the process for boosting important posts. We examined social ads and how they work very similarly to boosts. We looked at social analytics and how to access analytics in Facebook and Instagram and what you should be thinking about when determining if your strategy is working or not. And finally, we touched on Instagram shopping and how it provides another channel for selling directly to your prospects. Okay, so for this week's assignment, we're asking you to do one of the following create a strategic post, that is, a post with a marketing objective in mind, and boost it, then monitor its progress. Even if you just boost it for a day or two and spend 10 or $20, you should notice a lift. Make sure you set a goal and make sure you include a call to action. Or you can try out a social media management platform such as Hootsuite or some of the others that I've mentioned they all provide a free trial. Connect at least two of your accounts and then schedule your first post. That's it for this week. Thanks and we'll see you next week.